Hello students. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, stack and how it would help us in handling procedures. Uh, let's continue uh, the topic further. A quick uh, recap of uh, the how to go about the execution of a procedure or a function. Uh, the convention that risk we follows is something like this uh, registers x10 to x17 are for parameter passing and uh, results passing and then uh, we would typically use the jal instruction which would look something like this jal x1 proc address where x1 will save the address of the next instruction that is following this jal instruction right and the proc address would be the first uh, instruction or the address of the first instruction of the procedure the callee or the procedure that has been called will use the stack to store all the data that needs to be preserved. Then uh, the actual logic of the procedure is executed. Once that is done, the uh, procedure would place or restore uh, all the results from the stack to the respective registers. Also, it would uh, keep uh, results in the registers that can be used by the caller and it will also restore the stack pointer to return to the caller uh, we would use the jalr instruction jump and link register instruction uh, wherein we are going to use the same register x1 that uh, we used in the prior jal to store the return address and because uh, that address needs to be used as is, we keep a, uh, we keep the offset as zero, right? Uh, now let's look at uh, the procedure which might uh, call some other procedures, right? Uh, which might not uh, come back to the caller uh, in a straightforward way that we have seen so far, or it can call itself. So these are called non-leaf procedures. A leaf procedure would be someone or uh, some procedure which will not call any other procedures and uh, once the logic uh, is uh, it will uh, it will be a simple function once the logic is executed uh, the control comes back to the caller the non-leaf procedures uh, would again come back to the caller that is the common part but it can call uh, some other procedures in the process uh, uh, that or it can call itself so the most popular example would be recursion right uh, for these procedures what are the potential issues or some new issues that we need to handle when compared with leaf procedures let's try to list them out the additional effort that we need to put in are to handling uh, to handle the return address because again, when we jump from procedure one to procedure two, there will be a new return address, right? So what happens to the previous return address? How do, uh, how do we keep track of that? And then uh, again, the, we have the same 31 registers to work around, uh, work with. So what will happen to the registers that need to be reused in both procedure one and two, right? And uh, what happens to the data that we have uh, we wanted to use within this procedure one right the local data or local variables that you can see so let's see how we can handle these issues uh, we need to ensure the correct flow of both control and data during the execution this is common uh, with uh, the leaf and non-leaf procedures with uh, some additional efforts right uh, in addition to these uh, we need to maintain the stack properly right uh, with uh, some additional care so that the variables can be stored and retrieved uh, properly so the steps would be uh, for nested call the caller needs to save a uh, few additional data onto the stack which are its its own return address right and any arguments and the temporaries that it has used uh, or that it intends to use after this call so you can imagine that to be the local variables in the procedure one 
and then um, once the control comes back from procedure 2 uh, to procedure 1 all these values that it has placed on the stack need to be retrieved so uh, to understand these let's see two uh, examples one is procedure 1 calling and the procedure 2 and uh, uh, the other example is recursion itself so non-leaf procedure uh, um, the first example is uh, where uh, let's say we want to calculate the GPA for uh, each of the student so there can be n students and there can be m students uh, sorry m courses per student right so and each of the course can have n number of tests right uh, this this number of tests itself can vary and each instructor would for instructor would follow his or her own uh, weights and uh, the grading policy right all this information is needed and each instructor uh, instructor can uh, uh, yeah like i mentioned decide the uh, final grade based on some distribution or uh, strictly uh, following the um, or, or strictly not following any relative grading let's uh, put it that way so if we consider uh, a flow per student per course uh, let's say that there is a procedure uh, titled course and it has uh, some more procedures like uh, procedure that calculates average uh, procedure that gives grade and uh, uh, we can have multiple such procedures for each student you know uh, it's like uh, uh, you have a loop of uh, n students and within that you have a loop for each of the course which is basically m and for each uh, course uh, you have different data that need to be worked with so you will uh, get a sim uh, similar assignment in your uh, uh, assignment 2 or uh, probably 3 uh, look at it and give it a try so basically whenever you are calling one procedure from another you need to take additional care of the stack and the return address right so this comes uh, uh, more with practice rather than me explaining uh, here moving on uh, let's look at the second example which is recursion so again uh, in case of recursion i'll take the uh, popular example which is factorial so the c code of the factorial uh, function would be uh, simple as this just these couple of lines uh, where we pass the n the number for which factorial needs to be uh, calculated and this uh, procedure would return the factorial itself right inside uh, this function the logic is quite simple if the value of n is less than or equal to 1 then we, uh, it would return 1 otherwise it would return uh, n times factorial of n minus 1 the simple uh, recursive uh, program right now why we would call it uh, recursive is uh, the control comes back from fact n minus 1 to fact n and eventually to the main function right uh, it's uh, let's say if we give n as 5 right a fact 5 would call uh, would be called by the main fu main function then fact 5 would call fact 4 fact 4 uh, will call 3 3 will call 2 and 2 will call 1 and that's where uh, we would uh, get a return of 1 where will that 1 go is to the fact 2 the fact 2 would again uh, give some new value to fact 3 then fact 3 to fact 4 and eventually fact 4 would uh, return some value to fact 5 that eventually will be sent to the caller that is the main uh, flow or uh, both the data and control in recursion but on the other hand in the iterative approach what would happen typically is uh, the the return of the control need not be from fact 0 to 1 1 to 2 uh, 2 to 3 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 and 5 to caller it can be directly from uh, fact 0 to the caller itself right you know both the iterative and the recursive uh, versions of factorial right try to trace the control 
that's when you will get a uh, stark difference between what a recursive procedure would be and what an iterative procedure would be. Let's look at the uh, RISC-V code for the recursive version of factorial. Let's say the main function has called the factorial uh, procedure or function and the return address is placed in x1, right? Uh, so here we have the factorial subroutine. At the very first, uh, at the beginning, we are going to make space uh, two for two registers onto the stack. And what we store is the return address itself and the value of n, which is in x10, okay? Uh, then we are going to subtract n to calculate uh, 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 sorry, uh, we are going to subtract n by 1 and that will be placed in uh, register x5. That would be compared with 1. Here we have the condition check. If the value in x5 is greater than or equal to x7, then it would mean that we would uh, jump to the instruction with label L1, which is here, where we subtract n by 1 and call the factorial again. Right, so the control would come back here. It will go as long, uh, it will go through this jump as long as uh, the value of n is greater than or equal to 1. Right, and then when the value of n is equals to 1, then uh, what we do is in the same register x10, which happens to be the uh, return value also in this case, we place the value of 1. We restore the stack pointer because the last function call will have the value of x1, which is uh, not disturbed yet. So we need not restore x10 or x1, it's already there. And then we would use uh, JLR to return to the caller, which would be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, when fact one, when n equal to one, so we will uh, return the value of one uh, as part of x10. and here, when we uh, execute this JLR, the control would come back to <coughs> this position for fact of 2. So what happens then is we take, uh, uh, we move the, or we make a copy of x10 in x6, right? And then we would uh, load or restore back the n value, which is 2 here, right? From the stack pointer. And we will also uh, restore the return address for fact two. We restore the stack pointer, and following that, we ca we can uh, calculate the product of uh, the product which is two times the return value of fact n minus one, or fact of one. Uh, so which which would be one times two. So at this point, again we. Uh, introduce the JLR equation, sorry, JLR instruction, right? Then we would uh, go back to the previous uh, caller, which is fact three. So this way, uh, until um, we will go back, retrace our steps till we reach fact five, and there the value of X1 for fact five would be the instruction in the main function, which is just after this JL X1 fact. Okay, so this is the condition check. This would be the check for the base case. And uh, these three instructions are uh, belo belong to the if, if case in the previous slide. And the remaining would be the else case, right? This way you would be able to uh, uh, write the recursive program for a factorial. So what I strongly suggest uh, in case uh, you haven't completely understood the flow, what I have spoken, go through this video multiple times. Also, uh, write this program in Venus and uh, write a small uh, main function. From there, call this uh, fact procedure and see how the control flow is happening using the step uh, feature that Venus provides. That's where you'll uh, clearly notice how the control is flowing. And in, in parallel, you can keep track of the register values x10, x5, 
right so that you will know for which value of n uh, the current execution is happening and also uh, you can keep track of the stack the way it would grow as we uh, call fract 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 to eventually 1 and then how it would reduce means uh, the stack pointer would uh, start its value would start increasing when we move back from fact 1 to 2 so on to fact 5 and eventually to the main function so go through the execution line by line notice how the stack and registers are changing right uh, with that a quick summary of procedures in risk v what is preserved and what is not preserved across a procedure call is uh, the standard convention is uh, this registers x8 x9 x18 through x27 x2 x8 and x1 need to be preserved and also the stack above the stack pointer means the callers data would be there so that should not be touched and what need not be preserved are uh, registers x6 x5 x6 and x7 and x28 uh, through 31 and argument registers x10 through x17 and also the stack below the stack pointer is uh, where we ourselves store some local data of this particular procedure so all the uh, registers and stack below the stack pointer need not be preserved and whatever is there on the left side of this table need to be compulsorily preserved the compiler uh, we, uh, if you build one for the risk visa should strictly follow this uh, a guideline right and as we are uh, writing the assembly code ourselves in this module i would strongly suggest you to follow the same uh, convention right it would also help you in debugging with that i will uh, pause this short lecture and the content of this lecture are um, also part of section 2.8 along with this uh, lecture uh, you will receive a couple of assignments that you can uh, work on primarily to give you hands on experience on many instructions that we have discussed over the past couple of weeks uh, with that i'll end this lecture thank you